During our Scripps skincare test, we show people how to conduct a pinch test on their own skin to determine how elastic their skin is. Our topic of conversation today is with our founder, Associate Professor Greg Goodman, and dermatologist of over 30 years on whether or not we can actually put the spring back into our skin. In an earlier video, we talked about wrinkles. So can you explain to me how wrinkles actually differ from a loss of elasticity? Yes, loss of elasticity can happen anywhere in the body, not just the face for a start. And it really is from an aging scenario. You have a certain amount of resilience in your skin that allows your skin to stay firm and supple and youthful. As you get older, there are many things that happen, but some of the things are around the collagen and elastin in your skin tissues that actually just starts to become older, less useful, less, less, less amount of it, less, um, uh, 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 less functional. And to some extent, that just lets things sag. Wrinkles are not sagging. Wrinkles are either done by expression lines or by um, a, uh, a general change in, for example, somebody's facial texture due to volume shifts and various other things. So there's a whole lot of going into, into elasticity changes that doesn't go into wrinkles. There is a crossover because when you have very superficial wrinkling, that is a function to some degree of very superficial sagging of tissues as well. But most of the time they're very different, to different occurring in different layers for different reasons. So from what you just said, does that mean that a loss of elasticity is purely an ageing issue? No, not entirely. In fact, probably not even mostly. Um, we think that uh, environmental ageing is very important in sagging. You will see this uh, sometimes in the loss of volume that occurs on the right side of an Australian's face versus the left side of an American's face because of the role of sunshine affecting those tissues. So we know that, that, um, that sun environment, probably pollution, definitely smoking, definitely alcohol, um, that you can get changes in the volume and changes in the ability of the skin to support itself. We showed in a couple of studies that, uh, that, that I've been involved in uh, that Australian women, for example, age 10 to 20 years faster than their US counterparts uh, in volume shifts in their face. We found that smoking and, and drinking to a large degree also have a deleterious effect on people's ability to retain their volume and their, and their morphology, their, their function and their, their suppleness in their face. Um, for example, smoking tends to produce volume loss right, right throughout the entire face, around the mouth, around the eyes. Drinking tends to produce volume changes in the mid face here. And you can, that's why you can kind of pick a drinker because that's a very specific thing to, to people who drink too much. Can skincare stimulate collagen production as well as reduce the speed at which we lose our elastin? I think it's important to realise that most skincare does work that way. Um, there's, uh, skincare is a long-term slow grind proposition to keeping our dermis, our second layer of the skin, in the best possible nick it can be. And that is by stimulating the fibroblast in the second layer of the skin to produce more collagen and to some degree elastin. Um, the, the, the fibroblasts, um, they need a lot of messaging and they get that from the top layer of the skin. So what has to happen is the top layer of the skin has to behave itself maximally and well in order to tell the collagen to be improved and increased to support that new um, top layer of skin. So it's a complicated and integral system. It's a very clever system. And if you do skincare for long enough, especially retinoids, vitamin A is particularly noted as, as an example of this, you will actually increase and improve your, your dermal function, your collagen. What you'll also do is a very, it's a very difficult phenomenon to, to kind of to understand, but when you have sun damage, you have gnarled elastin, you have cotton wool elastin, it behaves abnormally, it looks blue when you look under the microscope with special stains. It is a bizarre looking um, layer. It does not function properly. When you use enough skin care for long enough, you build a collagen layer just underneath the, the top layer of the skin and that pushes down, you can see it, it's called a green zone, it pushes down this, this, this blue cotton wool stuff out of the way so your skin can then function as a cosmetic unit a lot better. 
So skin care does that and it does it with a number of different agents and it's important function. That's why skin care makes the skin look better in the long term. In the short term, it's all about the top layer, but in the long term, say months or years of skin care use, it's about improving the second layer. Thank you.